The age-old strategy of divide and conquer is apparent in many places and <clears throat> is found in the Holy Roman Empire of the past in which the countries of Europe were divided up into competing factions that all fought to become the crowned emperor and of course that crowning was done by the Pope. Now this is part of something called the tectonic theory which in school we are taught has to do with the plates on the earth but in fact there are many ways that the tectonic theory can be applied. This is described in Garth Nix's The Keys to the Kingdom series and can also be found in the League of Nations and the United Nations uh, ruling schemes. It basically takes place when a person in in a metaphor would move the pieces of a chessboard uh, rather than the plain pieces they would actually move the tiles in which the pieces move on themselves thus shifting the ground itself and moving around the um, the plates it's the idea of tectonic warfare now in the United States the uh, the future our future was to be divided up or possibly still will be divided up into specifically nine well actually ten separate districts these are based off of your zip code identifier and begins with zero and then ends at nine now on this map um, it doesn't specifically stipulate uh, which states are involved but for, uh, the um, the states would cease to exist and you would instead live in a district that would be based off of your zip code and that would essentially become a independent uh, well an apparently independent nation but all of this stuff is a facade it's all about establishing the mechanism to manipulate each grouping against each other uh, where in fact there is in there is no independence there's only control and this scheme was uh, highlighted in the Hunger Games series in which you had the various districts that would send champions to fight in the Hunger Games but instead of a singular champion we would have uh, essentially uh, fabricated wars in which large groups of people would die uh, fighting each other without the realization that they were all being coordinated against one another now according to Wikipedia a zip code is a system of postal codes used by the United States Postal Service the term zip was chosen to suggest that the mail travels more efficiently and quickly when senders use the code in the postal addresses introduced on July 1st 1963 basic format consisted of five digits now I have been told that that is in fact a lie and the zip codes were not around until later now when it comes to the idea of controlling perception the oldest uh, the oldest page in the book would be the control of publication essentially uh, it's the idea of the gatekeepers that keep people from actually uh, publishing now the big publishers today have very very deeply infiltrated control they control uh, publication of books through all sorts of means that now they control Amazon and all of the uh, allegedly uh, independent publishers that were uh, originally according to them anyway on the side of the uh, singular independent publisher uh, self-publishing right that's the term and it's obviously a bad term when used by the individuals that call themselves traditional publicists and all of their little minions they control the library system and they control all of the writing groups that you might join whether it be on Facebook Google or otherwise and of course they would only present the ones that they are in control of so they control every aspect of it now the interesting part is that when we look into the trademark lost in manga we go down and find out that the owner is Barnes and Nobles and Barnes and Noble booksellers incorporated which is a very famous gatekeeper when it comes to publications and they have obviously uh, been involved in many things but uh, we will go and see what in fact is behind them now their address is listed in New York but the state or country in which they were uh, organized is Delaware no surprise there and I would posit that the 
actual quote-unquote government, the corporate government that rules us today uh, based on foreign interest, is actually uh, has their capital in Delaware because it appears to it appears that all major business filings, they all go back to Delaware. Now, when we look at uh, Barnes & Noble Booksellers Incorporated, uh, who filed this trademark? Well, we go down and we find out it was the Secretary of State and that's the only name given, out of Oklahoma. Now, this stuff about uh, um, corporations pretending to be government couldn't be more obvious when it comes to municipal corporations, what we would call a city, incorporated cities, right? Incorporation. But it's also interesting to find that there is a quote-unquote governmental entity filing trademarks for the Barnes & Noble booksellers, which is an allegedly an independent corporation, uh, not obviously a subsidiary of the quote-unquote government. But here we find out that it is in fact exactly that. And all of the large corporations, they're simply a facade, as, all, as usual, part of the tectonic warfare strategy actually. Uh, but also it comes down to the idea of controlling perception by making sure that people who try to publish something that might damage their uh, their controlled mechanism, well, they'll be suppressed and, uh, and whatnot through their mechanism. But this goes even deeper when we look into something called Project Bluebird. Special research. I would uh, add social to that, special social research. But anyway, let's read this document here. General problem for the rest several months, past several months, excuse me. Bluebird has been endeavoring to ascertain by research, study, instruction, and some practice what value, if any, can be derived from SI and H techniques when applied to war and specific agency problems. These broad problems using known SI and H techniques may be classified as follows. A. Can accurate information be obtained from willing or unwilling individuals? Can agency personnel or persons of interest to this agency be conditioned to prevent any outside power from obtaining information from them by any known means? Can we obtain control of the future activities, physical and mental, of any given individual willing or one willing to by application of SI and H techniques? Now that, that C right there. That's important to note because it co correlates with the health director's mandate of monitoring, quote unquote, excessive social activities from the cardinal principles. Now, <clears throat> D, can we prevent any outside power from gaining control of future activities, physical and mental, of agency personnel by any known means? That's essentially explaining uh, brainwashing, right? How can you implement a brainwashing program that is resilient to anything that might um, uh, contest it, right? Any, any sort of truth that might go th get through the mind control program, can you it set it up in such a way that the, uh, the truth doesn't in fact damage it and the people continue and in fact fight to keep their uh, false viewpoint that was uh, programmed into them through this, this program. Bluebird believes that a above that A above can be answered in the affirmative using SI and H techniques. Bluebird is not fully satisfied with results to date, but believes with continued work and study, remarkable and profitable results can be obtained regularly. However, B, C, and D above are as yet unanswerable, although Bluebird is of the opinion that there is a worthy chance that all three may at some future date be answered affirmatively. This opinion is supported generally. By numerous individuals having knowledge of their techniques and by much literature and intelligence in this field. Since an affirmative proof of B, C, and D would be of incredible value to this agency, Bluebird's general problem is to set up, conduct, and carry out research practical, not theoretical, in this direction. Set up below is one specific proposal aimed at achieving our ends as rapidly as possible and with a maximum of security. Through internal agency channels, Bluebird has given the name of, that's blacked out, an individual of blacked out extraction and not a citizen of the United States who had been given certain operational security clearance, blacked out, was reported to have done considerable work in SI and H and to have an unusual and interesting general background. Blank was reported 
as being reliable, trustworthy, a known anti-communist. In view of the above and on the instruction of the director of INSS, was brought to a safe area near headquarters and interviewed, interrogated, and observed by Bluebird on 1920 and 21st February 1951. Personality, ability, intelligence, sincerity, and apparent security-mindedness were impressive. Bluebird officers were unable to find any indications of deviousness or pro-Soviet interests during these observations. Only apparent obvious weaknesses were his foreign background and non-United States citizenship. Now, of course, the uh, so-called uh, pro-Soviet anti-communist crap, that's all uh, cover for uh, the, the um, operations of foreign interests that, in fact, controlled both sides. So, on the other side, they would do it the other way, anti-capitalist, uh, pro, um, pro United States or UN or something like that, right? Well, either way, it's all part of the, uh, the cover so that they can carry out these operations without people uh, knowing what they're really doing. Anyway, according to blank, he was born in blank in blank. Yeah, they redacted a lot of information from this document. No surprise there. Blank discussed at various times his work and interest in the SI and H techniques. He claimed that most of his present work was along the lines of hypotherapy and involves post-H suggestion, but admitted that his experiences with drugs, gases, etc. in conjunction with SI and H was somewhat limited, although he's similar with much of the literature U.S. and foreign in these fields. Blank admitted that since he had been in the U.S., he had induced age conditions in at least several hundred individuals, male and female. In all age groups, Blank demonstrated successfully some of his operating methods before the B officers on the 19th, 20th, 21st. Now, I would guarantee that quote-unquote Blank is, in fact, a Nazi scientist. That would be the most applicable uh, explanation for who this person is and why they blank his name out. For matter of record, Blank was has briefed on the security aspects of B work and cautioned against all and any discussion outside concerning these matters. Blank signed the standard secrecy agreement. On the basis of Blank apparent ability, relatively simple and easy cover, background, personality, and interest, it is proposed that Blank be either directly employed or contractually employed by I and SS for the specific purpose of engaging in guided research tenting and experimentation along SI and H lines under the general's direction of the director of INSS and under the immediate direction of B. Specific proposals. It is proposed that blank be brought to headquarters immediately and formally interviewed by a very long blank. Interview to include basis of arrangements, cover, location, salary, operational funds, and security of PHS. It is proposed that Blank be given a full and detailed polygraph examination by Blank on material prepared by Blank. It is proposed that immediately a full field investigation be started on Blank, include checking of all names, places, squadrons, etc. mentioned by him. High priority. It is proposed that immediately after Blank be given full security clearance, he will be thoroughly briefed, given all necessary funds, and instructed to begin research and testing along lines set out in 5 below. It is proposed that after minimum time to permit, Blank full opportunity to satisfactorily become operational. B officers and trainees will, under suitable cover, participate in and assist with the research and testing for purposes of training and experience. Bluebird specific problems. Set up below are specific problems which can only be resolved by experiment, testing, and research as proposed in the paragraphs above. These are not in any sense all of the problems B is considering, but are merely typical and point up the need for practical research. One, can we condition by post-H suggestion agency employees for persons of interest to this agency to prevent them from giving information to any unauthorized source or for committing any act on behalf of a foreign or domestic enemy? Two, can we use in a matter of an hour, two hours, one day, etc., induce an H condition in an unwilling subject to such an extent that he will perform an act for our benefit? Long range. Can we create by post-H control an action contrary to an individual's basic moral principles? Four, could we seize a subject and in the space of an hour or two by post-H control have him crash an airplane, wreck a train, etc.? Short, immediate activity. Five, 
Can we, by SI and H techniques, force a subject unwillingly or otherwise to travel long distances, commit specific acts, and return to us, or bring documents or materials? Can a person acting under post-H control successfully travel long distances? 6. Can we use SI and H to combat fatigue, produce extreme mental effort? Can we guarantee total amnesia under any and all conditions? 7. 8. Can we alter a person's personality? How long will it hold? 9. Can we design tests to determine whether or not an enemy agent has been conditioned by SI and H or any other method? 10. Can we detect SI and H by use of SI and H regression? Can we make a conditioned subject reveal by SI and H specifically how they were conditioned? Drugs, torture, fatigue, hostage, pressure, techniques, set, um, question mark. 12. Can we devise a system for making unwilling subjects into willing agents and then transfer that control to untrained agency agents in the field by use of codes or identifying signs or credentials? 13. How long can we sustain a post-age suggestion unaided with reinforcement? 14. What would be fastest way to induce SI and H conditions with drugs or without any mechanical aids? 15. Can we devise a standard, simple, relatively fast technique for inducing SI and H conditions? That can be used by untrained agents with or without drugs. It is, is it possible to find a gas that can be used to gain SI control from a gas pencil, odorless, colorless, one-shot, etc.? What are full details on sleep-inducing machine? 17. How can sodium A or P or any other sleep-inducing agent be best concealed in a normal commonplace item such as candy, cigarettes, liquor, wines, coffee, tea, beer? Gum water, aspirin tablets, common medicine, coke, toothpaste. How effective can the carotid artery technique be made? Can it be used while subject is unconscious? Is it faster than other techniques? Can we, using SI and H, extract complicated formula from scientists, engineers, etc.? If unwilling, can we extract details of gun emplacements, landing fields, factories, mines? Can we, while a subject is under SI and H control, show them a map and have them point out specific items, locations, etc. on the map? Can we also have them make detailed drawings, sketches, and plans? Could any of the above be done under field conditions and in a very short space of time? So now we come to Project Artichoke. Project Artichoke was a project developed and enacted by the Central Intelligence Agency for the purpose of researching methods of interrogation preceded by Project Bluebird. Project Artichoke officially arose on August 20th, 1951, and was operated by the CIA's Office of Scientific Intelligence. I love these these obviously um, the, these obviously pro CIA, pro Roman, pro Jesuit uh, morons that write this crap, where they use the wor words like arose for uh, their special garbage. Primary goal of Project Artichoke was to determine whether a person could be involuntarily made to perform an act of attempted assassination. Ha ha ha. Yeah, right. Now, uh, today, the most obvious place that we can find uh, the manifestation of Bluebird is with Twitter, which has been changed to X, commonly known by its former name Twitter. is a social media website based in the United States with over 500 million users and of the world's largest social networks. Right? Social network. Social engineering, right? That's the purpose of it, as was stipulated in Bluebird. How to get people to do all the stuff that they want them to do uh, and violate even their own moral uh, understandings and stuff like that. Obviously, Twitter has the symbol of the Bluebird as their logo. But this place manifests itself in many other places, such as with the Articles of Incorporation of the Bluebird Dress Shops, Incorporated, Cleveland, Ohio which uh, we'll find is a, has a pattern when it comes to incorporators and locations. And, of course, that particularly disturbing name. Articles of Incorporation, Bluebird Dress Shops, Incorporated, Cleveland, Ohio. It states, Know all men by these presents that Gerald Richland of 322 Leader Building, Cleveland, Cuyahoga, Ohio, natural person and resident of said county, being county in which the principal office of Bluebird Dress Shops Incorporated is located, is hereby appointed as the person and whom processes tax notices and demands against said Bluebird Dress Shops, blah, 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 may be served. Cleveland, Ohio, June 7th, 1933.
here's the other page uh, for this particular document, 1933. Notice that date. 19th of day, 19th day of June 1933. That date predates the um, the uh, Bluebird Project Bluebird's alleged start date in the 50s, and also it lists here a different name, President H. A. Leidner. Now remember, in the uh, in the Bluebird files, there were there were three individuals that were referenced. There was the blank. There was B, and then there was Bluebird, who sounds like an individual. And, of course, it's also the code word that is used in all of these uh, programs. But it is interesting to find documents that appear to correlate and share a strange pattern with other documents and, and predate the alleged start of that operation. Here we get another Bluebird Incorporated. Um, actually, I believe this, no, this is the same one from 1933. Now we have, um, actually, this is a different filing for Bluebird Incorporated, also from 1933, but its name is different, where it stipulates Bluebird Incorporated as the name, blue slash uh, bird, blue dash bird. Uh, purpose of which is formed here buying, call, uh, selling, and otherwise women's and men's um, clothing, dealing clothing, furnishings, and shoes, operation of retail stores, and the buying, selling, leasing, and otherwise dealing in real estate and leases thereof, and doing of any all things incidentally thereto. So, yes, they will do a lot of stuff with real estate. You will find that the basis of most things, commerce and the land, are very important. But, of course, this would present a foundation for safe houses, right? Safe houses operating this uh, program, this Bluebird program that we saw from the 50s. And they were studying up for it in the 30s because they control everything. And uh, when they publish these documents, they do it undercover so that in case it gets leaked, they always have a way of explaining it away, such as with their so-called... Uh, pro-Soviet, anti-communist um, stuff. And uh, naturally, uh, Nazis, National Socialists, uh, incorporating and carrying out the same strategy and objectives as the communists, but they're quote-unquote anti-communist and therefore pro-capitalist, which in, in general all leads back to the same source, and it's a, it's a sandbox where both sides are controlled. Now, here's another one. This is Bluebird Plastics. John J. Gerlach, President, and John B. Gerlach. Isn't that weird? John J. and John B., right? Gerlach. Secretary of Bluebird Plastics Incorporated and Ohio Corporation, which is a print corporation, with its principal office located in Columbus, Ohio. And this is from 1966. And... While these names, all of these names could be fake, there is a pattern here, and it does appear to uh, relate to, anyway, that Project Bluebird. All of these companies are somewhat engaged in the same things and likely setting up the facilities and safe houses that they need for carrying out their experimentation before they bring it out into operation, as we see with uh, Twitter. Now, the next pillar of uh, our despicable opponents in, uh, that control everything today, the so-called globalist cabal, or whatever you want to call them, we can find a good example of their revisionist element of lying. In fact, they have many ways that they lie, but revision, revising uh, works and changing uh, history, rewriting history, is one of their primary uh, motives. History of Japan together with the description of the Kingdom of Siam, 1690 to 92, by Engelbert Kempfer, M.D. They would not have used the addition of M.D. in that century. Physician to the Dutch Embassy to the Emperor's Court and translated by J.G. Schutzer, F.R.S. Now, uh, a physician at the time would have been very different from a physician at this time. Let's look further. Now, one should always uh, become weary or wary, weary and wary, <laughs> when they see portraits 
in books because they're often fake. But this one states that it was a photograph of Sir Hans Sloan. Now, what's interesting is that uh, they state that the photograph, uh, quality of photographs and the ability to take photographs uh, wasn't wasn't uh, around during the life of Sir Hans Sloan, which was uh, 18th century, like 1720s. But this book itself went through a variety of control elements, your gatekeepers. Uh, printed at the University Press by Robert Mecklehose and Company for James Mecklehose and Sons. I'm probably saying that wrong. Publishers to the University of Glasgow. Macmillan and Company, LTD London. The Macmillan Company, New York. Simpkin, Hamilton and Company, London. Macmillan and Bowles, Cambridge, Douglas and Foolis, Edinburgh. So yes, it passed through quite a few elements and levels of revisionism. Now let's see just how egregious the work is done in this book that is dated very far back. But the date is a lie. Here, The History of Japan by Engelbert Kempfer in three volumes, volume one. Here on page three, under the title Voyage to Siam, it states, well, Previously, it had talked in this uh, book about how some Japanese sailors had been uh, blown away by a storm and that they had crashed into Macau. How convenient. Portuguese controlled Macau. To recommend themselves to the Japanese emperor and perhaps which they had more at heart to recover their former advantageous trade. Talking about delivering up the... Uh, the sailors. For this reason, it was resolved to relieve the 12 Japanese whose lives had been saved to treat them with kindness and civility and generously to send them back to Japan on board of one of their own ships. But the event fell far short from answering their expectation, for when they got into the harbor of Nagasaki, all the Japanese without exception were committed to prison, and the Portuguese vessel strictly guarded without permitting anybody body to set foot on shore till the governors of Nagasaki could give an account of this nice affair to the imperial court at Yeddo. Yeddo? Anyway, and orders sent from thence as to their further conduct. The Portuguese were like to put to death and to have their ship burnt pursuant to the standing imperial orders on this head. But the severity of the court being somewhat allayed, Partly by length of time, partly by the intercession of Mr. Bootman, then resident of the Dutch East India Company, they at last, in consideration for their good intention, of their good intention, obtained leave to return to Macau, and provisions were offered them, consisting chiefly in rice and water. Now, first to note, the pattern of speech in this work is clearly from a later time period. Especially with that phrase, pursuant to the standing imperial orders. That is not a way anyone from the century that they are claiming this book is from would speak. However, the events in this book greatly contrast to the explanation of the same event in a different book that is in fact dated later. This book is The Great Ship from Amicon, Annals of Macau, and the Old Japan Trade, 1555 to 1640. Centro de Geostudas, uh, well, Center of uh, Historical uh, Marine Studies, Lisbon, 1959. Here it states, You villains, you have been forbidden ever to return to Japan on pain of death and have disobeyed that command. Last year you were guilty of death, but mercifully were granted your lives. Hence you have earned this time nothing but the most painful death, but since you have come without merchandise and only to beg for something, this sentence is commuted to an easy death. Versus, of course, the uh, other book where it said that they were uh, let go, basically. The Portuguese were then trussed like turkeys and thrown into jail for the night, which they passed in weeping and wailing according to the Dutch account, or in prayer and thanksgiving according to the survivors. Next day, they were taken to Martyr's Mount near Nagasaki, the scene of so many similar tragedies, where they were all beheaded, except for the lucky 13. These last, after witnessing the execution of their 61 companions and the subsequent burning of their galliot with everything on board, were sent back to Nagasaki in a small Chinese junk on the 1st of September, with an insulting dispatch to the Senate of Macau.
informing them of the fate of their embassy and warning them not to try anything of the kind in the future. The citizens of Macau received the news with traditional Portuguese piety, many of them with tears of joy in their eyes, congratulating each other on such a piece of good fortune, especially the families and relatives of the martyrs, all of whom dressed not in mourning but in gala clothes, etc., etc., blah, 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 lie, lie, lie. Anyway, both of these works appear to have fabrications in them. But the book, the second book from the night, night from 59, appears to be using the original articles that had the fabrications from the time. And these two books are telling very different stories about the same event. Now, the actual killing of the Portuguese at Nagasaki, not the Japanese, right? Uh, they tried to say it was only Japanese that went there. Uh, well, that is the reason for Pearl Harbor, as I referenced in my other video, and the super suspicious bombing of Nagasaki is clearly a uh, corroborative element that proves that they were that the second the second story is the true one, the one where they were actually all killed, not the first where they were all let go and nothing happened and everything was hunky dory and the person was writing with um, 21st century language using the phrase pursuant to standing imperial orders. Quite ridiculous. Now, the uh, elements that uh, prove the concept of infiltrating roles can be found with the uniforms and with other sort of um, patterns. So the U.S. Army uniform is green. It's a green jacket, tan shirt, black tie. It's the dress uniform. Now this is similar to the Wehrmacht uniform, which also bears resemblance to the U.S. Marine Corps uniform. In the, but the, the Wehrmacht uniform is green with a red a trim and uh, the uh, obvious, the iconic hat. Now, we're told that the Continental Marines uniform of 1775 was, in fact, a green coat with white or gold pants. And if you'll notice in Army uniforms, which I don't have a picture shown here, the Army uniforms have a gold stripe down the side of the pants. So clearly we're lied to about where the Continental Marine uniform comes from, and in fact, what color of uniform the Continental Army even wore. Now... There's a striking contrast that can be found among uh, sheriff uniforms today, where they clearly look like a military outfit, even though they are very uh, uh, reprehensible in many ways. But their uniforms are usually tan and green for sheriffs. And there's many other sections of uh, so-called law enforcement, which are actually foreign occupiers that uh, appear military. Now the Marine Corps uniform has the black jacket, the black coat, with the red stripe down the pants and blue pants, right? The Marine Corps dress uniform is are called the dress blues. This is similar to the Navy dress blues, which are in fact more black, super very dark blue, and they also have red trim and they have the same sort of a naval look uh, considering it is the navy and the marine corps had the has the naval look as well it's highly unlikely that they wore green in the continental uh, force because obviously green would stand out whereas blue is the the idea is that blue blends in to the horizon and naturally when we look at the kriegsmarine or the german uh navy we find a similar outfit, and the Marines probably wore something similar as well. Now, the Union forces were known to be wearing blue. And as we see, their jackets are, the, again, that dark blue, almost black, and the pants are blue. Also, the police forces in the United States are known for being blue, actually pretty much across the globe. And the, uh, here we see a parade from the uh, New NYPD, New York Police Department, and they look similar. They have a black, dark blue, or actually that is that looks to be black, um, 
jacket and blue pants and then of course they have the blue button shirt contrast this to the uh csa or confederate states of america with their gray uniforms and this one has uh, a, a red sash the state highway patrol outfits they wear gray as well mostly and black now when we look at the nazi ss uniforms we find that most of their spectra their um, color scheme is black and the red and white arm patch with the so-called swastika uh, which has thus been uh, removed by the controllers of publications from use and all other uh, outfits that use the swastika are condemned including american indians and uh, india indians and other peoples and cultures that use that symbol including in fact the germans themselves um, but either way the color pattern and uniform style should be noted here as being black red and white the same color pattern can be found in the vatican where the pope wears all white and then the cardinals wear black and red and sometimes all, uh, mostly all red on certain days and then of course they have the white undershirt and the white collar for the clergy but the color scheme is the same find the same color scheme with the so-called mafia uh, such as in the movie Godfather, where you have the red rose, black suit, and white button-up undershirt. Now, uh, the Reiter, or Schwarz Reiter, were a type of cavalry in the 16th to 17th century Central of Europe, including Holy Roman Empire, Polish, Lithuanian Commonwealth, Tardom of Russia, and others, contemporary to the Curacer, Curacer and Lancer Cavalry. They used smaller horses, with, for which reason they were also known as ringer feeder. Now, nothing here says that Schwarz means black in German, and these were called the German black riders, and were specifically uh, uh, notorious mercenary outfits that went around Europe doing essentially the same things that the so-called uh, SS were accused of doing, and so on and so forth. And also we have the same similar color spectrum when it comes to depictions of pirates, where you have the black flag, black pearl, black hat, and then of course naturally that red bandana over the head, and then the white skull and crossbones. Strangely enough, the Papal Guard does not carry the same color spectrum in their uniforms, which have that gold and blue which is interesting, but they also do have the red. And then there is, in fact, one uniform that is red, black, and white. Also, you'll notice that the plumage on one uniform is white, on one it's red, and then you have the black beret and a golden black plumage on the other. Now, another place that we find the patterns to uh, uniforms and uh, infiltration and control of roles and titles and whatnot is with the Egyptian symbology. Here we have a depiction of Osiris and Isis, who are allegedly uh, god, god and goddess that were married. And we also see in many of these de depictions the Egyptian sun disk above their heads. And that can be found in the coronation of the current so-called king and queen of England, with their crowns uh, making discs and also the uh, obvious uh, image of Osiris and Isis. Now, when we look at the crown of uh, the Egyptian crown worn by the Pharaoh, there are three sections that were divided up into three separate places that we can all find in the symbology of the Vatican. That is the uh, the curled staff of the bishop, and then the popes uh, and bishops, of course, crown that uh, conical head. Now, in the depictions of saints, uh, we find the sun disk behind them often, which we call halo now, even though it's the same thing. And you also have the arch that then uh, usually goes back in a setback and also makes the sun disk or halo around their heads as well. We also find the halo and sun disc present in the depictions of many other so-called members of the state. Um, and the Queen Elizabeth was the uh, embodiment of Sekhmet, which is has certain um, abilities and powers and things like that. 
So when you look at these symbols, one thing to notice is that each of the quote-unquote Egyptian gods and goddesses, they all have certain duties and responsibilities. And when you see the manifestation uh, in so-called leaders of state and all that stuff of certain gods and goddesses, it is a communication of what their purpose is and what they're going to do. And of course, the most obvious element that we see with these patterns is with the all-seeing eye or the eye of Horus, which is above a pyramid on the uh, crappy, stupid currency that we have to use today. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please uh, check out my other content, like and share it, subscribe to my channels, and uh, it, there are free books available at the links. Also, if you so choose, you may support my work at any of the options provided, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Buy Me Coffee, etc. Thank you.